we are going to see what are the collections kind of different different collections we are going to use that in the android so i can say new right click new kotlin class and i can say collections dot kt is a kotlin right i'm creating some collection so here you can have fun we can have what fun and then we can say list into this list i can have val lst is equals to array of array list of array list of you can say string i would be needing array list of the string so there is one function built in function array list of string array of whatever it is and then you can say lst dot add your string element you can add it and you can say android then you can say lst dot add java you can say c sorry here you can say c cpp and php whatever it is array list see how you created the array list if you want to form the array list something like this now what i want to do i would like to iterate over the array list so you can do for el in lst one for loop in right we are using in then you can say print ln and i can say el so element is dollar el right element is what dollar el it will show you the element a new version of for you can have another version of for also for i in 1 to 200 200 something like this for i in 1 to 200 right for i in 1 to 200 so it will print print ln i the value i is dollar i the value i is nothing but the dollar i different different versions of the for remember that these are too much mechanical versions of the for one of the classical version of the for if you want to iterate is particular over the list dot for each right dot for each and you can say print ln and element is and what's the dollar what should i write dollar int it it correct dollar it here you can find dollar it why it now can anyone explain why it functional programming representations of the functions at that lecture we have explained this if your function is having only one parameter right kotlin understand this as it if you have doesn't name that parameter kotlin understand it as it like this right now this is how you will iterate so i'll show you the output of this code this much code what's happening 
on the track outlet suddenly battery get drained out that's why i restarted the machine how you will create the list this is how list would be created list and you can say try kotlin try kotlin will take little bit time try kotlin well you can run directly from here as well have the main file right and you can call the function list and see so instead of running i would like to run see this would be the problem right particular file cannot be run over here that's why we go you can run you need to make lot many configurations over there right so it is running complete app which will take unnecessarily load which is absolutely not needed and that that's why we try with the try kotlin right you can write to the main as well i can get the main from here and write it like this and run the code can you see different different outputs the value of i till 200 it has printed right and this is a for each output of the for each if you can say element is it element is still this is output of for each then your this element is and value of the i till 200 it has printed something like this right so it will work something like this now how do we create the map sometimes we need map also i want to create the map map or say fun map sorry here you can say val map is equals to map of here you can say map of string and int or reverse int pair you can say pair is one class to that pair you can pass int and you can pass string map of what it is needing okay it is completely needing key and value pair so you don't need to use the pair in this case this key and value keys would be of type int and values would be of type string so key and the value would be something like this now how do you add it map map dot what you can say here map dot okay just see how map works kotlin map example how maps are working in the kotlin 
see list set and map are the fundamental things list of 1 2 3 then map of something like this even you can create a map something like this map of 1 to android in this case you don't need this you don't need to write this map of 1 to android then 2 to java 3 to 3 is map to what you can say php 4 is map to jsp like this map 1 is map to 2 is map to 3 is map to 4 is map to right now what you can do map dot for each you can get both keys and values here you can say print ln print ln print ln key is equals to dollar t value is equals to dollar u right and then here you can call the map and here we can call the map and same thing I'll try to do here Can you see key is 1, values Android, key is 2, values Java, key is 3, like this. Map of. Then you can say map dot, how do you add the dynamic keys? Map of 5 is equals to. map dot or I suppose you need to do well MP hash map of int and string then mp dot put I suppose can you see put function you can put dynamically say 1 you can say java like this map of 1 can you see mp of 2 is equals to kotlin then mp of 3 is equals to php and mp of 4 is equals to ruby etc and iterator is same no matter is a hash map or it's a mutable plane map mp dot what you can say for each t and u I mean this is a key and you can say val keys and vals then you can say print ln here you can say key is dollar key 
value is dollar wells something like this you can have okay key and the value and for each is nothing but one function you have passed and function you remember that this is nothing but what function for each nothing but what function so let me copy this much code and see what happens main not found can you see key is again the same on the hash map map and the hash map so list is dynamic list map is key value pairs you would be having key and the value pairs now another one is a set fun set what is the set now ordered or unordered unique keys for each as in work as in yes this is the function right for each here you have written the function this is a function body for every element of the map it is going to iterate means zeroth key its value first key its value second key its value and same you are printing here for each and every element it will iterate each and every element suppose you have 1000 elements 1000 times this line would be getting executed see for each is the function if you can see for each and you are passing some action here it's a function right so for each itself is a function which is accepting another function if you can see for each is a function can you see this much is the function which is accepting another function who is returning the void now function yes print element another function when can you see fun demo here is a fun demo and fun demo is also accepting the function fun demo is what also accepting the function whenever you would be calling the function with only one parameter what i am saying whenever you would be calling the function with only one parameter and that parameter is another function you can write it something like this right you can write it something like this fun demo is what one function parameter to that function is what one for another function means the function parameter is accepting the function and that function is having only one parameter and this will become what it this year can you see it is int this it and this int is same that's what we are doing here fun demo function is accepting the function any any function see here any function can you see this this is a full function which is returning the true what do you think here is that cb is a callback parameter whose type is function which is returning what boolean so this is the function this is the function and which is returning the true so this is the function body if you can see here also i have written same thing can you see fun demo i have called and to that fun demo we have passed the function 
सेम वी हैव रिटर्न हियर आइदर यू कैन कॉल लाइक दिस और यू कैन कॉल लाइक दिस और यू कैन कॉल लाइक दिस सो वी आर प्रेजेंटली वी आर फॉर द फॉर इच वी आर यूजिंग दिस राइट सेम इज हैपनिंग इन द कलेक्शन इफ यू कैन सी दिस कैन बी रिटर्न इन दिस ऑल इन दिस मैनर ऑल्सो दिस कैन बी रिटर्न इन दिस मैनर ऑल्सो फन it would be having i'll write in same same code i'll write in a three ways if you can see this and this now traditional way of writing this is accepting the function remove these braces these braces are needed fun and then this and this so it is accepting the function and why it is giving the error just reformat the code call requires api level 24 minimum is current java util dot hash map dot for is but fine this is a third way passing the function so this is the first way this is a second way and this is a third way of writing the function right so you decide which way you will prefer i will prefer this way okay so the, now we are going to see something called let's set right if you see this map is working or not working map is working or not working and then run the code it would be working perfectly compilation completed successfully and you would be getting now output didn't respond server didn't respond for net error can you see it's working right three ways of writing for i told you here now another way or another collection is the set what is set now unique keys are unique in the map also keys are unique you don't have multiple keys with the same value sorry you don't have same keys one one cannot be twice similarly in the set there is a no duplication you can say val st is equals to set of string and then you can say st dot or hash set of hash set of string st dot you can add android again you can add st dot add android i have added twice remember that st dot add java now let's try to iterate over it st dot for each print ln dollar what id right let's try to print the set here 
let's try to execute this I have written Android Android twice can you see only Java and Android is coming no duplication duplication would be avoided in the set so we have seen three collections map then we have seen list and then we have seen the set because ordering cannot be guaranteed by the set it's in the documentation they have written ordering means it is internally right they have used one data structure that data structure cannot guarantees you of the ordering because you have written the duplicate entries and duplicate entries might be processed after the normal entries and that's why ordering might be changed right if you go to the set they have it is from the java set a generic unordered collection of elements that does not support the duplicate elements clearly stated methods in this interface right support only read only access to the set read only access to the set that's why we created the hash set is a element type the set well they have written somewhere in the case of what you can say in the case of hmm no i don't have documentation let's go to the javads here you can say java hash set docs the class implements the set interface backed by the hash table that's why it's a hash set it is a no guarantee as the iteration order of the set in particular it does not guarantee that order will remain constant over the time this class permits the null can you see this the class implementation set it makes no guarantee as to the iteration order of the hash set in particular it does not guarantee that the order will remain constant over the time huh list list you can be using the list so list is allowing you to the duplications as well if you don't need the duplication if you don't need the duplications go with the set right that's about what you can say the needed collections we are going to use these collection mostly in the android right so these collections would be used mostly in the android map is a raw is a raw collection hash map is a hash table with the map hash map is nothing but what the hash table and the map this is from the core java right so at the time of java's collection we have learned all these things can you see hash set what they said it's a set interface backed by hash table map backed by hash table is a hash map so hash table is a built in algorithm right linear probing and many other things are supported by the hash table searching is simple in the hash table that's why people use the hash table right many times similarly here you map off this is a plain map and this is a hash map backed by the hash table and this is a native implementation of the map you cannot add anything to it it's a read only 
but if you need to add something you are going to use the hash map right similarly about the hash set okay for more details kindly go through the java's collection java is having rich collection api they will detail you more things in the more detail you see there is this much description they have written or a single hash set right this will give you in detail things but in the kotlin we would be using something like this i'm restricting myself to the kotlin how to use it normal table as in yes so hash table is one algorithm right for adding deleting searching hash table gives you some ways if you see hash table is a built in algorithm not hash set hash table can you see in a computing a hash table is a hash map is a data structure which implements the associative array so in the data structure first year we have learned this what do you mean by the hash table it's a algorithmic style of implementing the insertions deletions searching by means of the key value pairs kind of you can say table is a linear and this is what you can say a little bit more detailed algorithm hash table so you can read it what is a hash table right fine so this is about what you can say the needed kotlin now i'm going to move towards the android project structure how android project structure works for that what do you can say hmm window and where that left panel goes okay here right let me comment out this otherwise it would be showing you as a error okay now let me create new package and say kt ex kotlin examples and i would like to move all of this into the kt ex okay in the kt ex you will find all the kotlin examples now file new project right here you will get this window when you say new android project go here new and new project here you will find this window now here you need to provide the application name here you need to provide what application name here you need to provide the package name now what is the why package name is so important your application on the play store is going to be identified by this package name if you can see com.miller.myapplication it is going to identify your application by this package name right and this you can see your company domain whatever it be my.domain.com a.b.c any dot separated string would be considered as domain it's not necessary that this should be registered where it would be getting stored that you are going to explain here and what would be your final package that you are going to explain here com.miller.myapplication in this case com.codecool. Cool whatever it is go to the next this screen will ask you you are building application for what for phone for variables for tv for auto or for android things 
Android Things is an operating system for the IoT. Presently, we would be learning this concept. What you can say, phone and the tablet. Once you will become master in this, you can jump to the other technologies, and that are simple. There are that are founding on the this thing. Foundations are same. I'll show you some examples. Let's go to the Android things. If you can see this Android things, you can say getting started. Everything you would be getting from here, right in detail. What is the Android things? It's a released now. It has been released. Create your own devices. You can build your own devices. IoT, Internet of Things, and this is an Android operating system on the Raspberry Pi, right? Or let's get the video. And sound. Huge growth in devices hitting the market. But have you ever stopped to think about what it really takes to build a connected product at scale? My name is Dave Smith, and today I'm going to show you how Android Things can help you build smart, connected devices for IoT. Android Things is an extension of Android designed to enable developers to build high quality, secure devices and maintain them at scale. The platform is made up of three core elements. A variant of Android that has been optimized for use in IoT, secure and managed updates direct from Google, and powerful hardware that is accessible and easy to integrate. Let's begin with the software running on the device. With Android Things, you can build apps using the rich framework provided by the Android SDK and Google Play Services, including the same UI toolkit, multimedia support, and connectivity APIs used by mobile developers today. Your apps can easily integrate with popular Google services like Firebase, TensorFlow and the Google Cloud Platform using the many existing Android client libraries. And of course, you can develop using all the same languages and tools supported for Android development today. To improve the Android experience for embedded use, we've tuned the platform for faster boot times and lower memory footprint, including a smaller variant of Google Play services optimized specifically for IoT. We've also added new APIs through the Android Things support library to better integrate your apps with custom hardware. This includes expanded support for peripheral interfaces and device management. Android Things does not include user-facing apps like a launcher or browser. Instead, it is designed to boot directly into the app you built for your device. Google takes care of providing updates and security patches to the core operating system so you can focus on your app. This means you get to take advantage of our ongoing work on Android your device is secure and protected. System images are signed by Google and verified for integrity on device. This prevents a corrupt or tampered update from being applied. Android seamless AV updates apply the image in the background without interrupting the application. Failure to boot following an update will roll back to the previous version, ensuring the system always boots into a no boot state. Updates are delivered over the air from the Android Things console using the same secure infrastructure we use to update mobile devices today. We can even push updates automatically when security patches are available for the platform. Apps on the device are managed exclusively through the console and bundled with each update. This means that Android Things does not include the Google Play Store because user-installed apps are not supported. Building production devices with Android Things is a turnkey process thanks to the system-on module or SOM architecture. Each module is a fully integrated component that you can drop directly into your final design, the same way you would integrate a framework or library into your app. Modules are manufactured in high volume by the chip vendors, enabling you to purchase them at low cost, whether you need to buy one, ten, or ten thousand. Android Things hardware is pre-certified by Google with a board support package provided by our vendor partners. These partnerships enable us to deliver long-term support for each stable release across our entire hardware line. 
The hardware is also pre-certified with regulatory agencies like the FCC, simplifying the certification testing required to take your product to market, and further saving you time and money. Android Things is so much more than just a cool new form factor for building your app. Secure system updates and accessible hardware make it a reliable platform for connected devices and computers. To learn more about how to get started, visit the documentation and check out our samples and drivers on GitHub. Also, join our community so you can ask questions, share your projects, and stay up to date with the latest platform announcements. Thanks so much for watching today, and I look forward to seeing what you build with Android Things. I'm Dave Smith, and I'll see you next time. See, this is on the top of Android itself. If you learn the Android application development for phone and tablets, building the app on the Android thing is very simple. It's an IoT, Internet of Things, and that is simple. But first, learn this thing, phone and tablet. After that, you can learn for wearable, TV, Android Auto, or the things, whatever it is. Right, then the next, here you would be selecting the template how your android application would be looking like at the first what things you would be doing and many more things right and when you do all the things say next right and finish right you would be getting architecture like this this would be on your screen it will create project architecture like this now google has explain very precisely here you can say android project architecture studio now google has project overview under the project overview google has explained that how project structure has been created a project in Android studio contains everything that defines your workspace for an app for source code and assets to test code and the build configurations right when you start a new project Android studio creates the necessary structure for all your files and make it visible in this so they are talking about this your android project can be viewed in the two ways or these many ways but most of the time two ways can you see this project you can see your android project as a packages as a scratches as a android means this is most of the time you would be using but whenever you would be pushing the code to the git make sure that you are on the project structure then enable the VCS and then you would be pushing your code. So your Android application can be viewed in the project manner, in the pro, uh, pro package perspective, in the Android perspective, in the project file perspective, in the production perspective and many other things. But most of the time I would be selecting the project, whole project you can see at one shot. So make sure that you would be having either project or Android. If you want to think Android related things, go in the Android. If you want to see project related things, go in the project. Right. Then, modules. What do you mean by module? Let me create a module first. Right click on the project, then new and then module. Right click on your project, then new and then module module i would be creating a separate module presently i would be creating the phone and tablet module just say next and here you can say name of application say sample module can you see minimum sdk this application will work from 5.0 to the 8.0 Oreo 5.0 which is a lollipop from 
the 8.0 which is a oreo right and that's sufficient these many updates are sufficient 5.0 to this i have all the versions but google recommends you to select give the support for 5.0 to the oreo 8.0 p is coming in the next to next month then say next right now here select the activity presently i would be selecting the empty activity next and source language would be kotlin and say finish here are source languages java and the kotlin select kotlin out of it and say finish so i am selecting the kotlin here so it would be creating the kotlin and android project right now let's come to the definition of the module module is a collection of a source files and the build settings what we are saying module is a collection of source files and build setting that allow you to divide your project into the discrete units of functionality into a discrete units of functionality your project can have one or many modules and one module may use another module as a dependency i'll explain you this right as a dependency each module can be independently built tested and the debugged additional modules are often useful when creating a code libraries within your own project whatever it is they have said file new now how many modules are there android app module then the library module google cloud module and other things right this is about the modules so there are two types three types of the modules and third one is very loosely used google cloud modules right but if, when you talk about the android when you talk about the android there are two types of the modules application module and the library module i'll show you the difference now i would be creating another module now in this case first time i have selected this now i will select this android library module you can say next and here you can say sample lib and say finish two modules i created application module and what library module so you will get to know the difference in the both what i'll do i'll open the app and i'll open the build.gradle file then sample lib and i'll open the build.gradle file both the build gradle files are on your screen now first difference is that apply plugin if you can see the apply plugin first is the application and library this is the fundamental difference between the plug plugin sorry application and the library right inside the application there can be multiple libraries libraries can be imported in your application there can be suppose you are developing related to the what you can say real time chat so you can create a chat library so chat library will never have the apk it will have the aar file and that can be ported over here now i'll show you consider that this sample lib as a chat library and i want to import this <coughs> i want to import this into this now here you can say implementation project and name of the project sample lib and sync the project now now all the features of the sample lib are 
as it is available inside this module inter module communication one library module can be imported into another application module one library module can be imported okay let's go to the sample lib main java and let's create some kotlin file and here i can say my dot kt right my dot kt we have created remember that we are inside the sample lib right we are inside what kotlin is not configured okay module is little bit strangely created we haven't selected kotlin as our default thing let's create another module new module i can say lib mod and where is kotlin new module android library i suppose yet google has not given the support to the library module can be written in the kotlin right presently there is a no selection way you cannot select the library or you cannot select the programming language somewhere here or you need to manually configure the kotlin right here that's okay but we can create a library in the java you can say new java class and i can say my and say okay right and into that we can say public void high would be one method public void high would be one method and i want to call i want to create object of my into my app module remember that we have already imported the sample lib into the app lib just go here and somewhere in the collection kt or anywhere you can create val my is equals to my can you see this my is coming from com dot me layer dot sample lib dot my means one library this library has been injected into this module and they are communicating with each other library module and the application module we have seen the two types of the module that's what they are talking and what is a module is a collection of the source files build settings that allow you to divide your project into discrete units of functionalities what they are saying a module is a collection of a source file it's a discrete unit of functionalities different different functionalities means for the db there would be another module for the chat there would be another module for another another thing there would be another module likewise this right this is about the modules app module and the library module google module is something different right it is something different that's fine now the project files how many project files you can see right show all the project related configuration files in the top level gradle script if you can go inside the settings.gradle settings.gradle will see will see from the last file settings.gradle is the file where all the modules mentioned app module sample module sample lib module all the modules are mentioned inside what settings.gradle file now next file would be we'll see one by one file local dot properties this is related to the local environment of your android studio where is the sdk and many other things can be written inside this local dot properties file but presently there is a only one line sdk dir right yes where is sdk that you have defined so iml file is related to the editor studio how your project structure would be looking like is most of the time defined by these iml files now this gradle gradle w bat 
is a batch file for the Microsoft series. If your application is working on the Microsoft series, you would be running on this. This file would be worked internally. Then Gradle W is a shell script. For the Linux Macintosh, this Gradle W would be getting used. Right. Unix based systems is a shell script. Okay. Then Gradle dot properties, which version of Gradle you would be using, how much size of Java you would be needing, and many other things are going to be decided by or Gradle properties. These are the local prop setting local properties. These are the Gradle properties. There are many Gradle properties like max Java size. Then the way you are going to build the project. Many other things are going to be defined inside this. We are not going to touch all these files in the future. Now build.gradle. Every project has one root Gradle script. Every project has one root Gradle script. right these are the root can you see all projects would be needing these repositories remember that this is a groovy programming language right and this can be written in the kotlin in the next studio release all the gradle scripts would be converted to the Kotlin. All the Gradle scripts would be getting converted to the Kotlin. Right. Now here you can say this is a build script. This is related to the all project and this. Now Gradle is a little bit about the tasks. Now if you go here, select the module, say app module, related to the app module, these many tasks are available. Related to build, if you want to clean your project means if you want to run this task just double click on this your cleaning task would be running here like this it's a success I want to build the project just double click on the build you can build the project like this right it's a building well this is a UI related thing you can do that thing by means of command line as well i'll show you that as well how to do that in a command line let's open the terminal right i'm clicking on the terminal here and then and then what i'm trying to do now see here i'm using dot gradle w if you see ls hyphen l you'll find all the project structure over here and in that project structure i am running on the linux that's why i would be running on dot gradle w i would be using gradle w if you are on a windows you would be using gradle w dot bat right so here you can say i want to run one of the task gradle w i am using linux that's why I'm proceeding with the dot forward slash. If you are using Microsoft, that would be simply Gradle W. That's it. Gradle W. If you are using on the Linux or the Macintosh, then you can say dot Gradle W. And then you can say build. It will build hold the project. Whatever you did from this, this panel, same thing you are doing from here but by means of what you can say command line this is by means of ui and this is by means of command line see we are nothing doing anything fancy just learning the studio what android studio is right all the things are getting recorded give your time see the recording and try to implement on your own machine see here build failed why build failed multi file define 
the car why what's the duplicate class found duplicate class found means do we have created car somewhere oh inside oops we have created this car 1 and this should be also car 1 right it will be extending to the car 1 now try to build it once again either build it from here right double click build it will build the same thing or you can build it from the command line dot gradle w and you can say build if you are on the microsoft do not use dot forward slash use just what gradle w build it's a shell script see now right see never use these are the warnings remember that if you never use it it will give you these warnings now it's building by means of command same it will build by means of ui right and all this gradle related configuration has been made inside this file gradle.build file if you can see the outer gradle outer gradle is having all the project related configurations all the modules related configurations more precisely one gradle project can have multiple sub modules and all the sub modules are controlled from outer build dot gradle if you see per module there would be one build dot gradle can you see this is app module it has its own build dot gradle sample it has its own build dot gradle sample lib it has its own build.gradle and you will find one outer build.gradle which is nothing but this which is a maintaining or the controlling all inner modules right now now inside the inner build.gradle file you will find this module is compatible with which versions what is a minimum sdk what is a max sdk what is the current version which plugins we are using it is dependent on which dependencies i'll come back to this a little bit later what do you mean by dependencies but remember that one one of your module can be dependent on some third party modules as well or third libraries as well you can import that here you can import all of that inside the dependencies so module level configuration will go inside particular build.gradle like this and the global level configuration will go inside this right so this is about your what you can say this gradle dot file well now there is one more file called as git ignore what to upload to git and what not to upload to git is decided by this git ignore file if you think that i don't want to upload this folder to the git write that file or write that folder here can you see build will never get uploaded screen captures will never get uploaded local properties will never get uploaded iml files will never get uploaded star.iml so you can mention those files here right now if you see dot gradle and dot idea dot idea is nothing but intellij idea this will work and make your project structure this dot idea file 
this is responsible for creating your project structure then comes dot gradle these are the gradle versions different different gradle versions you will find over here 4.1 3.12 many things that all the gradle related things would be over here actual gradle related jars actual gradle would be here inside this if you go inside 4.1 there can be some files they might not have been generated yet right just just have a command build needed root build and you can say build needed build needed means whatever needed settings are required for this build all that things would be made available over here that's what we are trying to do right but this is about the gradle and this is about the idea now when you jump inside the module right when you jump inside the module you will find build you will find the source you will find git ignore you will find build.gradle and proguard rules proguard is a guard which is a guarding your source code or the byte code in many ways we'll see this time to time right means if there is a multi dex you can write over here purposefully an uglification of the code can be made by the proguard proguard is one of the java library and there it has some rules when you learn or when you learn more about the proguard that things can be written over here then inside the app the definition of the app every individual module can be independently tested executed and the debugged so every single module every single application module would be treated as separate application every single module would be treated as separate application so this would be having its own apk file every application module would be having its own apk file then you can see source inside source there are android test there are simple j unit tests here you will find simple j unit tests and here you will find android j unit tests over here we'll see that later and you would be working under this folder more dedicatedly which folder main folder right you would be working dedicatedly under this main folder now there are resources and there is a manifest file that we will see tomorrow what do you mean by resources what do you mean by manifest file <coughs> right so let me push this much code to the git cancel first add git add then git commit here i can say android here i can say project structure i am going to you would be learning more and more about project structure as we are starting to deep dive into the android right git commit then git push and push the code and i can push the code okay i have pushed the code and let me stop the recording